what is the mem minimum word limit um, to, to the essay? Um, there's a maximum uh, on the Common App, for example, of 650 words. Uh, Read actually also has a supplemental essay. We have a second essay that we require, and there's a 500 word maximum on that. Because again, we're trying to get you to be, and that sounds like a lot of words, but truly it's not a lot of words. We're talking like maybe a page, page and a half um, is the maximum that you can write. You want to get close to that if you can. That if, if you have 650 words to tell me about you and you only write 100 words or 200 words, that might be a little bit of a flag too, is, okay, why, A, why didn't this person use all the space that they could have to, to tell me about them? And B, is there's, there's a line between being concise and not being clear enough. And so you want to find that line. Um, so I, there is no... couple of sentences um, to be able to say anything about you. Um, but um, make sure, I would just say, rather than focusing on what the minimum is, focus on sharing whatever information it is that you want to, right? Remember that so what, as whether you're gonna use an object to share your so what, or share a story that us about something that, that happened to you or something about yourself, um, make sure you're utilizing that space to the best of your ability. Oh, Common App does tell you if there's a minimum. I, I didn't know that. All right. Looks like it's around 200. How many essays do we have to write? Um, does it depend on the college? What's the deal there? Yeah, I think it's just going to depend on the college. Like if you're applying through the Common App or the Coalition App, you really only have to write whatever, you know, I think the Common App has like six or seven different prompts and you pick one of those prompts and you write your essay um, and you can submit that same essay to all the schools that you're submitting your application of the Common App is that it allows you to submit the same information to multiple schools without having to do it over and over again. Now, individual colleges might have what we call a supplementary essay. So for example, read, we have a supplementary essay called the Paideia essay. So the Paideia essay is a, Paideia is a real event that we have here on campus every January. It's, Paideia is a Greek word. It's translated uh, loosely to mean um, to educate. And so this is an opportunity for faculty, staff, students, and alumni to apply and teach I mean, literally whatever you want to teach. We've seen everything from the history of comic books to how to become a drag queen and everything in between. Um, so what the Paideia essay is asking you is if you were selected to teach a Paideia class, what would you teach and why? And what we're really trying to get at with this question is what are you passionate about? And how and, and why is this why is this something that you want to communicate to others? Um, and really there is no guideline to this, right? Like, you could go academic and, and teach about an academic topic, or, or you can go for something fun or silly or a hobby, whatever it is that you want to teach. Um, like I said, we've seen people say that they want to teach a class on the, the history of comic books, uh, but then the next essay, that person might want to teach quantum physics. Um, we're not judging what the topic is. Uh, we're just curious about what, what your interests are, um, and we're just trying to get to know you better. Um, and so it's not a trick question. You don't have to choose something academic, um, but that's just our example of the supplemental essay. A lot of colleges will ask a supplementary question of like, why X Y Z college? So like, why read? You know, why Portland State? Why, you know, or Oregon State? Um, these are some questions that you might have to to answer, um, and and that might be a supplementary. An essay. They just have that main main application essay, and that's all they need. So it really just depends on um, uh, what it is that you're, what that prompt is, what colleges want, because uh, every college asks for something different. There's a question here. Uh, one of my prompts is to introduce yourself to your first year roommate. That's also a very common prompt. Um, how casual should that be written and what should I be talking about? Um, really, this is another opportunity. This is another like why why me essay, right? But as a 
rather than from the perspective of answering it to the college, you're answering it about yourself. So this is really your opportunity to say, hey, like, here's who I am. Here's what I like. Here's what I enjoy doing. Um, I, I don't think the question, they're really just would you introduce yourself to this other person that's going to be a part of your community um, for the next, you know, at the very least year um, or, or, or longer potentially? Um, so I think it's fine to go pretty casual. Uh, you know, be careful on the casual, how casual, right? Like if, if you're not comfortable telling that information to a stranger, a complete stranger, it's probably not appropriate to put on that essay. But uh, you know, I think you could trust your judgment. Spectrum. What are what are some of the essay prompts that um, I'll encounter? What are some of the prompts? Oh, um, I'm trying to think of. So the common app. I don't know if they're using the same prompt again this year. I have. I, I haven't even looked at the the common app yet. Um, that starts next week for us. So I'm not sure what their prompts are, but really be ready to answer questions along the lines of why something. So you'll have to explain, you know, like, if, you know, introduce yourself to your, to your roommate or why this college, why is it that you're applying to this school? Um, you know, uh, there might be questions around, um, you know, what major are you selecting and why did you select that major? Um, there might be questions around um, like, uh, you know, tell me about a topic that you're really passionate about and why are you passionate about it? Um, so there's so many different prompts. Uh, at the end of the day, again, I think I kind of talked about this in the beginning is the whole point of this, these questions is for the colleges to get to know you um, and who you're going to be within their respective communities. Um, and so just kind of think about that perspective um, as you're writing this application or these, um, these essays for your application is what am I, what is, again, it comes back to that, so what? What am I trying to tell that reader? What, is, what, what do they need to know about me? Does, what would I write about if I don't have um, a, a big, like adver adversity that I can write about, about growth and how I grew from that adversity. Yeah, I don't think you have to have adversity to talk about growth. We all grow as people every day, right? Um, maybe it's not an adversity that you grew from, but maybe it was an opinion that you changed. Maybe you one day thought one thing and then after getting a lot of information or, or seeing firsthand how something um, impacted another thing, um, that's growth right there. You could talk about how you've, you've changed your opinion. I think we're so afraid to talk about, like to, to change our opinions. And we think once we say something it's set in stone and, and we can't change it. And I think a lot of that like cancel culture doesn't help towards that um, uh, opportunity for growth. But, um, you know, I really think you can, you don't, um, you, you don't have to experience adversity in order to write an effective college essay. Um, you don't have to share insanely personal stories um, or, or talk about your trauma uh, in order to get into a college. These are things that are information that you get to decide how you want to disseminate or choose not to disseminate. Um, and there's so many routes that you can go when writing your college essay. Um, you know, you could talk about, um, uh, we talked about, you know, avoiding to write about your activities, but you could talk about one of your activities and expand upon it, right? Um, I had a person write about hockey one time um, and it was on their activities list, but then they talked about in much more depth about why hockey was so important to them, right? There was something that they shared with their father um, and it brought them together when he was growing up. And then when he was old enough to play, it was a bonding moment for the two of them. Um, and, uh, and he talked a lot about that growth um, between his skill sets um, of playing hockey uh, and, and how he hopes to grow uh, in college um, and take some of those skills, even though he's not planning to play uh, hockey in college, how that growth mindset uh, is going to help him succeed in school. No adversity there. He really just talked about growth. 
how formal does the essay have to be? And you know, what is the format, the font, the, um, the spacing, things like that? Yeah, um, I think that kind of is up to you. Um, if you want to do like double space or single space, I don't think that the applications have a lot of those restrictions. I'm not 100% familiar with that. It'll tell you if you um, if it doesn't like it. Um, I, my biggest suggestion is write your essay in a Word doc and then do the copy and paste thing um, because it helps you catch a lot of your mistakes. Uh, I would say be careful about writing your essay in Google Docs uh, and the copying and pasting because for whatever reason, Google Docs, when you copy and paste, sometimes it messes up the formatting. So if you're going to use Google Docs to type your essay first and then copy and paste it, that's fine too, but just make sure you pay attention to when you paste it um, that it doesn't screw up the formatting. Um, because that just makes it a little bit clunkier to read is all. Um, same with font, like I don't, don't use like Comic Sans or some of those other maybe sillier fonts, just use some of the, the more traditional, like I'm a big fan of Calibri, um, Times New Roman is fine, whatever. We're not gonna be sticklers about that. That's, that's like less important to us. Um, in terms of formality, you know, again, think about this, that you're writing to a college, right? Um, so how you write and how you communicate to a college is not the same that you'll in communicating with your best friend. Um, I would never communicate with a student the way that I communicate with my best friend. I communicate with my best friend in memes. And so anyways, that wouldn't make sense. But, um, uh, you know, something to think about is, is, again, you're talking to a complete stranger and you're talking to a person or to, or to people, I should say, um, that are really assessing your writing quality um, because that's a part of what we're assessing in the application process as well as, um, especially for like Reed uh, or a lot of other liberal arts colleges, writing is a really important skill set to have. And, and we're trying to figure out sort of where you are on the spectrum of your writing skills. Um, and so making sure that you're really taking the time um, and putting in the energy to write your essay and make sure it's coherent and try not to rush through it. Um, and basically all the points that we've just talked about, uh, because that's, again, we're, we're trying to assess, assess uh, multiple things here while we're while we read the essay. So don't do text talk. Please spell out the word you. Please make sure you have the right there, there, and there, or where and where or definitely and defiantly, or collage in college, you know, those basics. And, and no judgment to those if that's things you struggle with. I struggle with that too. I literally can never spell the word definitely. I've just come to accept that about myself. Um, but that's why I spell check everything. The difference between them, uh, which essays, which essays do we have to write? Uh, how are they different? Um, yeah, so the Common App yeah. and the Coalition App, if you're not familiar, are two application systems, basically, that allow you to apply to multiple colleges at the same time without having to do individual college applications. So when I was applying to colleges, um, I applied to about five or six different schools, and I had to do a separate application to every single school. Um, so basically answer all the same questions five or six times um, and, and submit all the same materials, but five or six times. The Common App, the Coalition App, these allow you to apply to multiple schools all with one application. And then it's basically a drop down, and you select which schools you want to send that one application to. So then all, like if you apply to 20 schools, all 20 schools receive the same materials. Um, now, of course, we each might have something that additional that we're asking for. So you've got to be paying attention to that. For example, read, we have the supplemental essay. So we need that. Um, some, school, some schools might require test score, some schools may not. Um, so those are just those little details you've got to pay attention to as to what the school is asking for you. Um, and they'll do reminders. So if you forget to submit something, um, they'll remind you. Um, and no biggie, just to make sure you get it in at some point, but uh, by the deadline. Um, the common app, we don't have a preference. I couldn't, 
I'd be surprised if a college had a preference there. A lot of it's really the same information. It's just laid out differently. I think every school that exists on the coalition app is like the application is free. There's no fee attached to it. And there's like some other requirements from the college. Like, I think you have to have like a certain level of financial aid available. And there might be some other requirements uh, in order for the college to be a part of the common or the, the coalition app, but any school can be part of the common app. Um, the common app has six or seven different prompts um, that you can choose from as far as the essays are concerned. The coalition app has something called a locker item. So the locker item is where you can submit a previous piece of work, uh, preferably something on the academic side. So like maybe an old essay that you wrote um, or uh, if you did some sort of like um, uh, analysis or a report or even like let's say you are in newspaper or yearbook or something along those lines and you wrote a really great article something along those lines that you can submit as your locker item but then the essay component will be um why is this uh, an important uh item why why did you choose this um it's asking you to talk a lot about that item um so it really doesn't matter to us one way or the other which one you use. We literally have no preference, um, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, we have no application fee at Reed, so it's going to be free regardless of which application you use uh, to apply. Um, there's also a COVID section. I want to make sure I bring that up. Uh, I think on both applications, um, I predict we're going to get a lot of COVID-related essays. And my suggestion to you is to save the COVID story for the COVID section on the application. So that's gonna be a spot for you to talk about how, how has COVID impacted you? How has COVID shaped your, your time in high school? Um, and use the essay space to talk about something different, something additional about you. My last piece of advice, and I promise I'll stop rambling, is uh, the additional information section. That is a, probably the most underutilized section on the Common App. Um, this is a section for you that has no prompts, and you can basically share any additional information that you want. Um, and a lot of people don't fill it out, but this is your opportunity to tell the college any last second information about you that just doesn't make sense to put it anywhere else. Um, I think this is a great use of space if there might be some sort of a red flag in your application. And when I say red flag, I mean that loosely. Um, like let's say your grades in sophomore year took a big dip. Um, and it took a big dip because maybe you got sick or maybe uh, someone in your family died. And that, really, that obviously impacts your grades. That's gonna impact your life and your story. Um, but if you don't tell me that, and I just see a dip in your sophomore year grades, I'm stuck making assumptions. Uh, but if you provide that information, um, that allows me to understand you and your context of your life. Um, and I can, I can rationalize like, okay, obviously, um, of course there's a dip in the grades, this person, had to deal with X, Y, Z, but look, once they dealt with it, their grades went back up. Which is most important when evaluating the application, GPA, essay, SAT, or leadership? Is there some sort of ranking system? Um, I can only speak for Reed because that's the only college I'm assessing applications for right now. Um, and what I can tell you is we review our applications holistically. So what that means is that we weigh all of these things uh, when we're making your academic decision. I like to think about them as puzzle pieces. So like your grades are just one puzzle piece, right? Um, your essays are one puzzle piece. Your academics are one puzzle piece. Your letters of recs are one puzzle piece. None of these things defines you as a person. Your grades do not define you as a person. Your test scores do not define you as a person. Your letters of recs do not define you as people. You as a person. You are all very unique individuals, and there's a lot that makes you all you. Um, but these are puzzle pieces that we're putting together uh, to determine what that puzzle is. What is that picture? Um, and again, it goes back to community. Truly, it does. Who are we? Who, who are you going to be in our classrooms? Like, who are you going to be in our dorms? Who are you going to be in Cheese Club? Who are you going to be uh, studying abroad, representing Reed College? Um, these are all the things that we're trying to assess um, in that application. And so um, I can't say that in terms of Reed, like 
we don't weigh one thing over the other. Uh, it's all important. We want to see it all. Yes, your grades are important. Your test score, I mean, I guess we're test blind for the next two years, but uh, you know, in the previous years, testing was important, but so was your essays and your activities and your letters of rec. Um, so make sure you're taking time to focus on all of these areas uh, and giving them equal attention as you're completing the application. More question in the chat. How important is your senior year grades? Well, that's a good question. Very important. Um, I think a lot of students think that we assess your application just from junior year below, and then you can kind of ease off on the pedal of senior year, but that's not necessarily true. We want to see how you're uh, progressing your senior year. Um, if, if you apply regular decision, um, we ask for your mid, mid year grades um, so we can assess that in the decision. But we, one of the things to keep in mind is when a college offers you admissions before they see your senior grades, it says in the application, in the acceptance letter, that um, um, your grades are your this acceptance is contingent upon a successful completion of your senior year um and so we're looking at those senior grades and so uh is over the summer we're going to go back and look at your final transcripts and we literally go back and look at every single student's transcript uh, and look at their senior grades and if there's like uh something concerning that's a a phone call we'll have with you, but uh, senior year grades are also important too, to answer your question.